Hey everyone, it's MK. Welcome to my home studio and this new updated version of Load Quilts the MK Way. You know, prior to me redoing this video, my previous loading video had been up on my YouTube channel for just over six years. It had tens of thousands of views. It was my most popular, most watched video. But you know, a lot has happened in our world since then. And as it relates to loading, I'm using a lot of new tools and a lot of new techniques. And so in this video, we're gonna cover all of those things. I'm gonna be working on my Handy Quilter Infinity on the Handy Quilter Gallery 2 frame. Now, as we go along, I will try to weave in mentions of variations that are most likely going to work on your frame if you have a different make and model. All right, let's get started and let's talk about the tools. All right, here I am back and I'm bejeweled in all of my quilting bling. Now, before we get started talking about tools, I really want to make a blanket statement and tell you that there isn't really a right or a wrong way to load your frame. You just need to do it accurately. What I'm going to show you are just the tools and tips and tricks and techniques that I have zeroed in on over my 15 year career as a long armor. The most important thing, whatever tools, whatever method that you use, is that you do it accurately and precisely because your loading of your quilt is really the foundation for the rest of your quilting project. Okay, back to all of my bling. First of all, I have my pins on my handy little pin cushion. Now, I don't use pins all that often, but when I do, I like to have them right here, right on my wrist, easy access. All right, I have my lanyard with my 120 inch tape measure. I have my handy quilter zinger with my small scissor close by. Now, some of you may not like all of this around your neck, doesn't bother me at all. And again, when I am loading, I don't wanna have to go and hunt for anything that I may have laid down, that I've misplaced, whatever. I just need everything on my person so that I'm ready to go. All right, next let's talk a little bit about the frame. On my Gallery 2 frame, on the front bar, I have installed the Handy Quilter Super Leader. It's a wider leader, and for somebody like me who's shorter in stature, and on a frame that's very deep, having a deeper leader just helps. We'll talk more about that as I get to that point in the loading. What I will tell you is you may see other videos where Handy Quilter or another educator is instructing you to put the super leader on the back backing bar. Again, I choose to put it on the front because of the depth of the frame and later you'll see how I use that when I'm finished with the quilt in the back of my frame. All right, the next big tool that we're gonna talk about is our zippers. Our zippers are made in-house by my dear friend Pam, and they're made custom for the frames. Now for handy quilter frames, Pam makes them to match the specifications of those leaders. If you have a frame that's a different make and model, all you have to do is do a custom order. You're gonna measure your leaders, and you're gonna put that precise number of inches on your custom order form and Pam will make them to fit your frame. All right, let me go on and get the zippers out of the bag and let's talk about what is included and how you install them. All right, real quickly before I jump into the zippers, I did forget to mention that for handy quilter frame owners, if you have a studio frame, which holds machines like an Amara or an Avante, you do not receive a super leader with your frame. Of course, you can purchase one, and in our studio back at MK Quilts, we actually put super leaders on all of our frames, studio frames and gallery frames. For gallery frame owners, you will receive one super leader with your frame. I put it on the front bar, and a little bit of a hint. I actually have 
a super leader on both backing bars on a couple of our frames in the studio. Now for the zippers themselves. This is how they will come to you. What do you receive and why? You are going to receive three what we call zipper tabs. And all that means is one half of the zipper has been attached to this fabric tab. And the reason why we do this is so that you do not have to attach your backing fabric right up against the teeth of the zipper. Okay, so we've done that part of the process for you. So you get two of the fabric tabs that are a clean hemmed finish. And then you get one of the zipper tabs that has a casing sewn into it. More about that in a minute. Now why do you need three of these tabs when you only have two bars? So the purpose of this is so that you can use one tab in the front, one tab in the back, and then you have an additional zipper tab to prepare your next quilt in line. So if you pretend with me, pretend I have a quilt on the frame, while this one is being quilted, I can take the next quilt in line, my extra zipper tab, and I can attach it to my backing so that when the one on the frame is done, I zip that off, grab the next one in line, and zip it on. It makes the changeover go very quickly. Okay, so that's why the three zipper tabs. Now the other thing that you're gonna get in with your zippers is the other half of the zipper. This is the pull side of the zipper, P-U-L-L. -L. Now, I don't have your leader in my possession, and this needs to go on your leader. So hence, the other installation video that I'm gonna drop here, it's very simple. I just take it to my domestic, either a quarter inch foot or a zipper foot, and boom, you just sew this onto your leader, put your leader back on the frame, okay? Hey folks, it's MK. I decided to drop my installation video from my YouTube channel here in the course. Now, first thing is this video is a bit dated. Wow, I'm in door number one of our studio. Looks completely different than it looks now. But the most important thing that I want you to keep in mind as you watch this portion of the, the class is that I may be holding a product called Leader Grips and we used to use those, now we use the Red Snapper system. It's a very similar product, just different manufacturer. So try to look past any reference or photo of the leader grips, which is that blue dowel rod that you're seeing me hold, and just concentrate on the instruction that I'm giving you to attach the zipper to your leader. All right, here we go. Before we get started, I want to make sure that all of you have your leaders attached to your frame in the same manner. And that is having your leaders in the front here cascading towards the middle between the bars. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two is we're going to be dealing only with the leader that's attached to the front bar, okay? That is the leader that you're gonna attach your zipper pull tab to. All right, Paul, if you can come in a little bit closer. The reason why I'm leaving the leader attached right now is so that you can have a clear visual about what I want you to do. I want you to look down at your leader, okay? So I'm holding it with my left hand. I want you to look down at your leader, and I want you to look down at the pull tab. Both of those items, okay, I'm saying the word down, right? I want your pull tab to be facing down. That is gonna go under the underside of your leader, and if you have a pin on you, which I don't right now, but just put a little pin in there to hold that in position so that we can take this to our sewing machine and sew it on. Okay, this next part, I'm gonna ask Paul to zoom in a little bit so that, again, you can have a clear visual of how you're gonna attach this at your domestic sewing machine. And I'm gonna turn around so that I'm oriented the way that you would be oriented when you're sitting at your sewing machine. 
Guys, I'm stopping at this point because in the original video, I forgot to mention something. Our sewing specialist, Pam, tries to make our zipper tabs match the exact length of the zipper. Now, sometimes it's off by just a little bit. So before you go to this sewing step at your sewing machine, I want you to find the middle of the zipper pull and the middle of your leader. Match those two points up and then walk yourself back out to the edge of your leader and with your zipper pull facing down, attach the pin and then follow the rest of these instructions to attach the zipper to the edge of your leader. If you do that one additional step, if the zipper is off by just a little bit as it compares to your leader, it will be centered on your leader. Okay, you've now you've had this pinned on, on here with the pull tab facing down. You've ripped your leader off of the Velcro and now you're sitting at your sewing machine and you're ready to sew this part of the zipper onto this underside of your leader at your domestic sewing machine. What you can do is choose a foot that's gonna allow you to get close to the zipper. I used a quarter inch foot that had a little lip on it. Some of your quarter inch feet might not be like that. You can also use a zipper foot. Whatever foot is gonna allow you to get close to the teeth of the zipper. And what I want you to do is allow just a little bit of space, okay? Maybe about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch away from the teeth is where you should place the edge of your leader. Now, one thing, when you get started, this little pull is going to be in your way when you start stitching. So just take the pull, pull it down a little bit so that it's out of your way, and start stitching with a nice short stitch length whatever your default on your machine is fine, and start stitching that leader to the zipper. When you approach the tab, put your presser foot down, um, lift up on your presser foot actually, needle down, lift up on the presser foot, and you're gonna be able to just wiggle that pull tab back towards the front. Again, lower your, your presser foot and continue to, to sew that zipper tab all the way down onto your leader and then you're gonna come back over to the frame and you're gonna put it on. Okay, I'm back at the frame. I have just completed what I explained to you about attaching the pull tab to the bottom of your leader. Now, the whole point of that is so that you can use the zipper fabric tabs that I have already created for you. It's important that you know that you should be always attaching these down at the left hand end of your frame when you're at the front side, okay? All right, I'm around to the back side of the machine now. Let's talk about attaching the zipper pull to the back side of the machine. Once again, you're gonna take that half of the zipper with the pull on it. You're gonna be facing the back of your frame. Now, I already have done this step on this um, leader, okay? So your leader, again, it's going to be blank back here, right? You're gonna take your pull, you're gonna face your, your leader, and once again, you're gonna put the pull tab facing down, okay? This time we're on the right-hand side of the machine as you're facing it from the back. So if you think about this, what you want to ultimately have is your pull tabs on the same end of your frame, front to back, okay? Pull tab down, put it underneath your, your leader, go back to your domestic sewing machine, same thing. Keep a nice distance from the teeth, sew that zipper onto your leader, okay? That's what I've done here. All right, next step. You're gonna take your other fabric tab that I have created for you. And you're gonna know that this is the one for the back of the frame because the one in the back has a casing sewn into it. Okay, so I've already done that for you. You don't even have to do anything. Grab this one that has the casing sewn into it. It has the male part of the zipper already attached to it. Say thank you, MK. And you're gonna come over here and you're gonna put this tabbed 
uh, casing zipper on, attach it to the leader, okay? So I'm doing that. Just follow me, Paul, and we'll get this attached. And right now the machine is a little bit in the way. Normally I would have that down at the end, but because we're filming, I've got it kind of in the middle. And that is basically it, you guys. I've cut the rest of this old video off because in the rest of the old video, we're talking about the older product that I used to use. Now we're using the red snappers and you can continue watching and learning from my new Load Quilts, the MK Way video. Once you have the zippers installed, it's on to the next tool that I use, Sew Tights. All right, up to this point, we've been talking about the zippers, which is what I use to attach my backing fabric. Now we're talking about the tool that I use to attach my quilt top to the quilting leader. Now, as I mentioned this, some long armors do not even attach their quilt top to a leader. That's called a full float. And if that is how you prefer to do it, then you're probably not gonna need these tools. But in our world, we like to attach the quilt physically to the leader, and these sew tights are the way to do it. All these little guys are, are magnets. I'm gonna drop my sew tight videos here with links. Again, they're a little bit dated, but they're still exactly how I install the sew tights and how I use them. Now, in those original videos, we only had the one small size of sew tights. Now we have the longer ones, they're called the Magnums, and they're just longer, stronger, and better, and you just need fewer of them, okay? We still carry both styles on our website, and in the description of the sew tights, I give you an approximation of how many you will need based on the length of your leader, okay? Hey, today I am here on the quilting side. I've got some quilting to do for clients. And so I am on McForte today and I'm just loading up a quilt. And I wanted to bring you along on a couple of things just to share with you a bit about uh, a loading technique that I've been doing. There's a little bit of a twist in how I'm loading my quilt top. And it has to do with this little product called sew tights. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the rest of my quilt loaded and then I'm gonna talk to you about how I've been using these products to load my quilt top, which actually takes away the need to use those. Those are pins. We wanna try to get away from pinning if we can and we wanna make our loading go super fast. Now, first of all, let's take a look and talk about this little product, the Sew Tight. Basically, what it is, is a magnet that is a two-part like device, okay? Magnet and a little bitty plate that the magnet sticks to. So, I want to show you kind of how I have boiled down to using them. Now, the first thing is you're going to need your leader that you normally load your quilt top to, okay? So, if you do a full float no top leader, then this is not for you. But if you're still using your quilt leader like I am, and previously you've been pinning, then this is for you. Okay, so the first thing is what you need is one of your leaders. The leader has a casing in the end of it, okay? Your leader comes to you that way. So what I have done with my leader is I measured out two and a half inch increments. And you can see I have, I put some marker lines and then actually what I did, you guys, was I took the metal plate part of the, of the sew tight, I slipped it into my casing, okay? So I slipped it into the casing on the end of the leader. And then every two and a half inches, I very carefully on your sewing machine, please be very careful because there's now a metal 
piece in your in your leader. Basically, I went and I sewed on either side of that little plate. And I sewed on either side of that so that the, the plate would no longer slide through the leader, the, through the casing, okay? So that's basically how you prep it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get my leader onto the bar and get my quilt up here and show you how I actually attach these things. All right, let me get the rest of this loaded. Let me get the quilt on and then we'll come back and I'll show you the second part of the sew tight that we do on our quilt bottom and no pinning involved. All right, I'm ready. I do wanna mention that I am using standard load. Okay, what I've done is I have my backing, my batting loaded. It has the channel lock line. And basically I just drooped my backing down so that it's out of my way. My leader is on the bar. I'm just gonna flip it over. Remember my little so tight plates are in the end of my leader there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wind up my leader the whole way until the edge of the leader is just peeking over the bar. Remember, all of my plates are in there. Okay, let's grab our little quilt for today. And basically what I'm gonna do is throw that baby over there. I'm gonna get it centered on my frame. Just kind of taking a look, am I centered here side to side? So that's a step that I would have been doing even when I was pinning. Okay, once I basically get the quilt where I want it, I'm just gonna go ahead and loosely pull it towards the front. I'm gonna let it just kind of gently rest down on my, bat, on my batting. And then I'm just gonna get this straightened out like this. Basically the fabric at this point is kind of hugging on the leader. It's just basically in place, okay? Then comes the other part of the sew tight. And basically what I do is I just kind of put a few out here on my rail, just so that I can have kind of both hands available for what I'm gonna do. Probably don't need the rest of those. And then basically I'm just gonna take my fingers and I can feel where that little plate is in the end of my leader. And I'm just gonna go along and put one of these little sew tights every place where I can feel the little, um, the little plate that's in the end of my leader. Now, as I mentioned, I, I do them every two and a half inches apart. Now I'm getting down to the end and I don't, oh, I guess I do have one more right there. But if you get down to the end and you don't have one at the end, well then you may have to do one or two pins just at, the, at your ends of your quilts. Uh, but basically, look at how fast this goes, you guys. And I guess I do need a few more. Just come on here, snap that down. This one turned out like perfect. <laughs> I had one right at the end on both sides. Okay, one left over, we don't need that. Okay, so that was pretty simple, right? All right, and then basically all I'm gonna do is wind my quilt up just like I normally would. Make sure that it's nice and smoothed out. I'm watching it, watching it, but look at how fast that was, you guys. <laughs> no pinning. And then basically the rest of this is all explained in my loading video, how I kind of get my quilt even with my plumb line. And then I come up here, I do my micro tightening. I get everything in place. I put my side grips on, I do my basting and I'm ready to stitch. Boom, that was fast. I took my pins off because I don't need the pins anymore. And that has been my method for loading fast, fast, fast with the sew tights. Hey everyone, it's MK. Welcome back to MK Quilts. So a quick update about the sew tights, and I'm at the bottom of this quilt, so I wanna show you how I handle getting them off when I'm down to the bottom. You can see that the sew tights are just peeking over here on the edge. Now, on the bottom of the quilt, 
If you are the type of quilter who normally would just unpin your quilt and then your bottom edge would be loose, then you can absolutely do that. Just go ahead now, take your sew tights off and baste down your bottom edge. Now, I've always been a quilter that likes to keep my bottom edge kind of in place while I do my bottom part of my basting. I like to keep it stabilized along the bottom edge. Well, if I take the sew tights off, then it's gonna be loose. So you're gonna see that I've put my pins back on, but I'm just gonna do a few pins along the bottom here so that when I take the sew tights off, I don't have uh, a lot of waviness going on, okay? So basically what I do is I kind of go every other sew tight, so in between every other one, and I'm putting the pins kind of at an angle and they're not really close to the edge of my quilt. So I'm not gonna run the risk of sewing over them when I baste. All right, so let me get the rest of this done. I'm just gonna take that last one off and put one final pin here in the corner. There we go. And then we'll just go ahead and go along and take them off. All right, there we go. That releases my leader. And I can go ahead and just kind of pat that down a little bit. All right, I'm gonna get my side grips on and then I'm gonna pull you in a little bit closer because I wanna show you a little bit of a trick that I do for basting along my bottom edge. There we go. All right, let me bring you on in so we can talk about the basting. All right, I have you zoomed in real close just so that you can see I do have those pins at an angle and some of them are closer to the edge than others, but you know, basically they're not that close to the edge. The one that is close to the edge is down there in the corner. All right, so I'm gonna leave you right here and I'm just gonna show you a little trick that I have always done with my basting. Now, I do not use channel locks when I baste. Some of you might, and if that works for you, that's wonderful. But I like to be able to move my machine around a little bit. I like to be able to move my quilt a little bit and adjust it if I need to. So I just don't use the channel locks. I do have some pins in my quilt here. So obviously I don't want to run over the pins. So let's just stop for a second and talk about this pin that's out in the batting. This pin out here in the batting is actually for my edge to edge pattern. It's the last pass of my pattern. So before I do anything, I am going to reposition my pattern and get that pin out of the way because I don't want to run the risk of running into that pin when I do the basting. So now I can go ahead and take that pin out. Okay, I'm gonna throw my machine into basting stitch if you are a handy quilter owner with Pro Stitcher Premium, what I do is I assign basting to my side panel because I use baste all the time and I don't wanna have to go through the other menus to find it. Okay, now, when I do my basting, I do not wanna run over a pin and some of them are closer to the edge than others. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, just as kind of um, an example, is I'm gonna push a couple of these pins close to the edge. Now, why am I doing that, MK, you might ask? Well, because I wanna show you my little cheat that I do whenever I approach a pin. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our, pull up our bobbin thread. My machine is in basting. There we go. Okay, whoops, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, it's in basting now. All right, first of all, for the one in the corner, I just go ahead and back that off so that I don't hit it. Okay, so I'm coming down, and now as I come along the bottom, I'm going slower. Okay, so here's one that's kind of close to the edge, and here's the other one. So if I was basting along and I got close to that pin, all I'm gonna do is kind of go around it with a little bit of a U shape with my machine. So I just kind of go out into the batting 
uh, anywhere where there's a, a pin that's close to the edge of my quilt. So that's my little trick. Uh, I don't have to remove all of the pins. I don't have to stop and push them out of the way. That just slows me down. So any place where I get to a pin, it's just a little cheat. That's just kind of how I roll. All right, next tool, red snappers. Do you remember earlier when I was explaining the zipper tab that has the casing sewn into it? Well, that is because I load with the red snapper system, but I only use that system on the back bar, which is where I need to insert the dowel rod that comes with the red snapper system. Now a little hint about using the red snappers. When you purchase them from us, there is full instructions in there from the manufacturer on how they install them and how they use them on their frames. So I vary just a little bit from their instructions. I actually do not attach my dowels all together in one long continuous section. I like to leave the dowels separate. I slide them in the casing and then if I need to take them out, I can take them out in sections instead of one long piece of dowel. And one of the reasons why I like that is because I kind of have limited space here. So it's not easy to get that dowel rod in and out if I have it connected. And the next thing is I do like to take those out sometimes when I'm going to use the pins in the back. Okay, more about that. So we have the red snappers in stock all the time. We sell them just as they come from the manufacturer. And again, I only use them on the back bar. I did want to mention that as of the recording date of this video, the people that make red snappers came out with these purple limited edition versions of the grip. Okay, it's a smaller set. It does not include the dowels, it's just the grip part, but it's purple. And as you know, that's the handy quilter color. Now for the side grips, we actually use a, a side grip that is outside of the Red Snapper products. These are the ones that we use. This is what the package looks like, and this is what the product looks like. Again, it's a dowel, and it's got a clear plastic grip for the top of it. Now one of the things that does happen, and it's just the nature of the beast, is sometimes these can get cracked or broken, actually like mine has right here. So the beautiful thing about it is, one, you can either order from us replacements, or two, you can actually use the grips from the red snapper system and just snap this right on here. I'm gonna demonstrate these when we load. They are absolutely great. So I think we're just about done with tools. The only other thing that I'm noticing on my frame is I do have a handy hammock installed on my frame. Again, the handy hammock, a handy quilter product, it attaches to our frames pretty simply, but I do know other long armors that own other frames from other manufacturers and they have ways to attach the handy hammock. And it's really great to keep that batting up off of the floor as you're doing the loading. All right, well, that's it for tools. I'm gonna grab the quilt that we're gonna load and we're gonna get to it. All right, here's the quilt we're gonna load tonight. It's a beautiful patriotic style quilt. The piecing pattern is called Picket Fences, and I will drop that link to the pattern. Now, I am using a wide back tonight, and I'm not really gonna go into piecing of backings. I will just say that wide backs on a large quilt like this are preferable. If you have to piece your back, I want you to think about piecing your backing horizontally. Sometimes you can get by with buying less fabric if you piece your seam horizontally 
rather than vertically. Now, if you get to the situation where you just absolutely need to piece it vertically, think about loading your quilt horizontally so that that vertical seam that you pieced is actually going to lay down sideways on your frame. It's just going to make it easier for you. All right, so I've already measured my quilt. I have enough wide back to cover my quilt. In our world, we always go four to six inches larger on all sides. That does make it eight to 12 inches in total, bigger than the quilt top. But for ease of loading and for ease of quilting, that's what it needs to be. All right, now the next thing that I am going to say is that I have never in my quilting career done center markings on my leader, center markings on my backing, and matched up those center markings. What I'm gonna do is use my frame and my rails to help keep my backing nice and straight as it goes through the frame. And what this allows me to do is really decide, based on whatever I'm loading, where I want to load. Sometimes I don't wanna load right in the center of my frame. I might wanna load down at this end, or I might wanna load down at this end. So if I just evaluate how big of a piece of fabric I have and decide where I want to load it, that's where we're gonna load it. All right, another tool, if you will, that I use is a spritzer bottle and inside is unscented best press. Because another thing that I have not done in my quilting journey is spend a lot of time pressing my wide backs or any backing for that matter. If I have to piece it, I do press that seam open, but if I don't have to piece it, I don't spend a lot of time pressing. I use the spritzer with best press as I load, okay? You'll see how we use that. All right, first step we're gonna do is determine where we're gonna put our wide back on our leader. And we're gonna take the zipper tab and the fabric over to our sewing machine and sew it onto the zipper. Okay, so here is the middle. It is a pretty big piece of backing fabric. So in this particular case, I am actually loading pretty much in the center of my frame. So to start with, I'm just gonna take a pin and pin the center part of my backing right to the zipper tab. Then I'm gonna walk my fingers out and I'm going to take this down to the other end of the zipper tab. And all this does, the only reason I'm pinning here, is so that when I unzip this zipper tab and take it to my domestic, I'm not going to be confused about where I start sewing. I'm gonna start sewing on the edge, which is where that pin is. All right, now comes the first beauty of the zippers. I'm gonna undo my ratchet. And over here on the right hand side, I am unzipping that zipper tab. And now I'm gonna take this entire thing over to my domestic and sew it on. Now a quick note about that extra zipper tab that I told you about to get your next quilt ready. For right now, I'm demonstrating to you using my frame and using the zipper while it's attached to the frame to just kind of show you how I centered that. If I had a quilt loaded and I was quilting and I wanted to take my next zipper tab and get my next backing ready, well, I would just find the center. I would find the center of my backing and I would just attach it away from the frame, not using the frame like I just did now, okay? so. If I don't have one prepared, like I didn't tonight, then I just stand here, I find where I want to load, I loosely pin it to the zipper tab, and I go to my domestic. Once I get this loaded, then I'll take the next zipper tab, that third one, and I'll go to my next quilt backing, get it sewn on while this one is quilting. All right, let's take this over to my 510, and I'll meet you there. 